Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we're gonna to be doing the song that you requested the most. I wanna shout out to Abdullah Hassan. Your comment on the Judas Priest Victim of Changes video got over a thousand thumbs ups. And so for that reason today, we're gonna to be listening to Judas Priest perform Dreamer Deceiver slash Deceiver. I'm very excited about this one because you tell me from these comments that this is going to showcase a wider range of Rob Halford's vocals. And this is some sort of power ballad I've read. I think it's gonna be really cool, especially cool for me right now as we're getting ready to go to Bloodstock and we're gonna be hearing Rob Halford live there. So I really wanna hear more of his catalog before I get that live treat. Let's get to it. Stand I feel like this isn't the same Rob Halford. I mean, my very first introduction to him was Painkiller. And it sounds like a totally different singer. This, this technique is so effortless. It's really pretty too. Okay, I need to hear that again. Stand I love this vocal production, and, and part of the reason I love it isn't just because it's a pretty sound, but I hear very little pressure that's driving it. It sounds like he's really just got the coordination down, and it's not it's not trying or um, heavy on the vocal folds in any way. And I think it's also very interesting um, that he's got uh, essentially no shirt on. He's got like just this jacket. So we do get to see more of his breathing. And that's something that I know a lot of singers uh, get some anxiety about because to breathe fully, really deeply often, you need to sort of release down lower and give up the six pack, if you will, you know, drop those groceries is what we say sometimes. And uh, it's really fun. He doesn't seem to be filling up like with a full opera singer-ish kind of breath here. He's just taking one that's fairly natural, but it seems to go through the entire torso. So you don't see um, like lots of collarbones rising or something like that. It seems like it just drops through the whole pillar right now. If we were happy. Mm. We said we didn't know. It's so good. To guess by the hand and up we go. There are a few notes in there where it, you know, he's he's seeing his speaking slightly under the pitch, and it seems entirely intentional that way which is fascinating because it's such a pretty, um, almost like classical sound right now, right? It's very, very lovely and uh, has this lightness to it. And so it's so interesting to hear him bringing that sing speak in and say like, I'm gonna veer away from just that pure ethereal kind of mode and let it go off of the beaten track a little bit. I like that expression, it feels very personal. That is a really good example of that, the sliding with it. Took us, Took us again, same thing. And end up we go. When he wants to be exactly on the pitch, he is. Thought we were lost. 
Oh, I loved that instrumental backing there. That was really cool. Um, I am fascinated by the low sound that he has here. A lot of times a higher voiced male, when you go down to the lows, they end up being less thick, less present. And his, his lows are really good. And it doesn't seem like he's necessarily using a microphone to help aid in that. Most of the time, um, if you have low notes and they're kind of in the lower end of your range, they get quieter. So what you do is you take the microphone and you swallow it. You just bring it a lot closer. And he doesn't seem to be moving it hardly at all. So that's just all him. That's not mic technique. Cool. Okay, back on. It's rangy already. Of time. We thought we were lost, but no matter how we try, everyone was in peace of mind. Cosmos is a single sonic sound that is vibrating constantly. So many different sounds in that little bit. They were all, they all had a lot of cut in them, but it's interesting to hear like we get just a little more edge on that top, which means he's, I think, just barely starting to constrict something else within the vocal tract to give it a little bit more of that edge. It doesn't sound like it's really on the vocal folds, the true folds themselves. Um, but it's really fascinating to hear him add just like the teensiest bit of that drive and then go through what, what is like kind of like a middle high part of his voice, I would say, and then also go into a lower register in his voice. He just is, uh, that's a lot of different coordination, but you see his face and it's so still. It's like, this coordination isn't something he has to even think about doing anymore. It's great. Uh, back a little bit. All sonic sound. Cosmos More. is a single sonic sound that is vibrating constantly. And if we could grip and hold the know we would see our minds were free oh they're free oh cool 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 stylings here um you guys know that i love dio so much and a lot of times he does little toss-offs and it's fascinating rob halford right here did a bunch of toss-offs right in a row and then stuck free so let's go back and listen to that. Um, very intentional styling. Uh, we could surmise why. We might even take a look at the lyrics and, and try and guess. Here. And if we could grip and hold on to the note, we Toss would again. see Toss. our minds Toss. were free. Toss. Oh, they're free. And then stick it. So this is fascinating. Um, let's see, it's, and if we could grip, and he tossed grip, grip, and hold on, I think that might've been another toss to the note. So it's so funny, each of these, I guess if you think about gripping and holding on to a note, you don't wanna let it out, but it seems like maybe because he's tossing off each one, it lets, it isn't possible to maybe to grip and hold on to the note. We would see our minds were free. And then it's so fascinating to me that it's only on the last free that he said, I'm gonna stick that right there. It's very expressive. It seems very deliberate to me um, as if he was looking for even more to express beyond what those written lyrics are. I'm really curious uh, if you all would, please, I'd love to hear your interpretations of why he chose that styling to apply to these lyrics. Let's keep going for now. <laughs> I clearly paused it at the wrong spot several times. All of you knew that that was coming, and boy, when I unpaused it, that was a shocker. Show! 
powerful. His vocal control is off the charts here. I, I'm i trying to figure out what all he's engaging to make these sounds. They, they are good. Those are really powerful sounds up there. Whew. <laughs> I just gotta say, I love how relaxed his jaw is. <laughs> I know it's one of those things where you're like, really, that's what you're gonna compliment? But yes, look at that mouth space, it's gorgeous. It's just like, it's like a Pez dispenser. That's a good jaw. A Pez dispenser jaw is a good jaw. Wow. <laughs> that Rob Halford takes a lot of inspiration um, from this guitar player. I'm not sure what his name is, um, but I have to think he takes a lot of inspiration from him uh, because it, a lot of like the sliding up and even the timbres that Rob Halford uses resemble the guitar to me. It's a very, very lovely combination. It's like Rob Halford was always meant to sing with an electric guitar and the way he does some of his slides just they sound like they were being done on an electric guitar. Very cool. Okay, so I think this might be going into the next movement into just Deceiver. I'm not sure though. Um, I, yeah, I think this is the next movement now. So it's just a deceiver, I believe at this point. I'm not entirely sure though, um, but it just was like a very different feeling overall. And Rob Halford's vocal production definitely has changed. You've got a feeling that's like a little more pressed. So uh, definitely singing in that lower, it's like not really truly his low range here, considering what I heard in the first part. Um, but this feels like mid lows and he's got a more pressed phonation happening, just driving it a little bit, but it's not like, Sometimes press phonation is bad. Um, this doesn't sound like it's getting anywhere near that. Uh, definitely we hear additional distortion that's happening there as well. It sounds to me a little bit like, like a little fry distortion at times. So like maybe happening at the retinoid level, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, but I do uh, appreciate that 
because we've got more of a driving feeling from the band as well, he's chosen to create a more driving tone quality to go with that. I want to go back a little bit. He also seems really intense. So Also, really enjoy the vibrato that he's adding in some of those longer notes. I feel like it's really tasteful. All is lost. It would cost. Men trust forever. Just fly. Yeah, he has so much piercing with that E vowel up there. Uh, and that's something I've noticed in some of his other songs too. When he gets up to high and especially E, instead of veering away from that, like many singers would choose to do, um, they would say, oh, no, that's too harsh of a sound. It, you know, it slaps you in the face too much. He leans into it. it. He likes having that aggressive sound going. It's very fascinating to me, especially coming from a classical background where if we had an e vowel like that, they'd be like, uh-uh. Nope, doesn't work. And they would say, okay, go round your lips, you know, make this sound a little bit darker, a little smoother. And it's just wonderful to hear somebody say, no, I'm gonna really embrace this crazy bright E vowel. And I'm gonna put it into this kind of music where the drive uh, actually supports having a bright, bright E vowel like that. It's fascinating. Let's go back one more time. was picking up until he went up to that high jump was this intensity. I love the way he's just like staring down the camera, right? Oh my goodness. He's very intense, very, very focused. That octave jump that he did up, uh, it, it's just crazy to me how easy all of his range is. He's got a very, very wide range. And when he hopped up there, it sounds like he's going into a reinforced falsetto to me, but it also... His voice is uh, tricky. I told you earlier, I was listening to it and thinking like, how, what all is he using here? Because sometimes it sounds like he's gone up and he's in head or mixed voice, kind of depending on where your background and vocal registers come from. Um, so he's up there essentially in his full voice before flipping over to falsetto. And it sounds like he can lighten that up, um, like make it more slender, but still more laser powerful. He's able to do that before flipping into falsetto, but when he is in falsetto, he also is able to do something called reinforcing the falsetto to give it more power. So it sounded to me like he had that break and he flipped up here, um, but I'm just so amazed by, uh, it sounds like he can really fluidly move around in that upper register. I'm guessing he'd be able to, to completely disguise any break or shift because of the way he's able to uh, lighten up both that top of his full voice and reinforce his falsetto. And then when he also adds a little bit of that uh, distortion, that adds to being able to disguise any sort of break as well. It's very, very good. Uh, back over time. Oh, get the story ahead. Also, it's like got like just like one eyebrow that does it. I feel I feel a kinship here, man. Just that one. <laughs> and the uh at the end is wonderful, organic, just true, awesome sound.
<laughs> uh, before you start singing here, I just want to comment on that time signature. You definitely have a feeling of three underneath the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three going. And it sounds like it's actually probably a six, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The eight on the bottom of that time signature, by the way, means that you have a subdivision of three that's happening within it. And when you have that subdivision of three, it also often represents a lot of movement. You hear that with like ships rowing back and forth with galloping. Um, definitely, I feel like more of a gallopy movement going on in this, which is also helping to drive the song forward. Okay, we're gonna go back to this. Oh goodness, it's almost about to end. I'm fascinated by the vibrato he has in here. It's a wider vibrato that's happening with Fry at the top. And it's just, vibrato is often sort of an opposition of muscles in the larynx. It can be created in other ways as well. But this one, it's really interesting to hear how he can let go while having something that a sound that would have a lot of natural tension necessarily be in it. It's so interesting to hear how he can let go and let that wobble just kind of come in. I want to hear it again. It's crazy. Woo. Control. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. I want to go back one more time for that ending. I I just immensely appreciate the amount of control he has over so many different aspects of his voice. Whether it's leading really open, there's times when it sounds like he had more pharyngeal space right here. It sounds like he has like very little pharyngeal space to make that sound just come out, have so much twang in it. And then at the same time, he's able to relax and let in this vibrato. <laughs> His eyes too. Whoa. <laughs> I feel like we barely brushed the surface of this song. And even though it's supposed to be one of the songs that shows the most range of Rob Halford, I feel like it's also just barely the surface of what he can do, especially knowing that he's continued for a very long career. It's very impressive. I wanted to talk about one of the lines, which I didn't discuss during the first time through, which I found so beautiful. It's, uh, he said in the cosmos is a single sonic sound that is vibrating constantly. And I love that partly because Rob Halford is a person singing it. And Rob Halford knows how to make those vibrations happen here and make his vocal folds go wacka, wacka, wacka. And it, a really perfect way, depending on what kind of sound he wants to produce. You know, it can be open or it can be more pressed. And then it's fascinating to know that he's able to then manipulate how that vibration is going through his vocal tract. He's able to uh, make the sound here smaller or wider to really affect essentially how much twang or loft is happening. And he's able to then also uh, take the, the tongue shape too and make this like crazy E vowel. He's really fantastic at playing with different kinds of vocal vibrations so that they uh, communicate lots of different kinds of feelings, right? Anywhere from that sort of slap in the face E vowel to um, this soothing, beautiful sound in the very first part. I was very surprised that he was also capable of that. Man, he's he is a, a very intriguing artist and definitely a person that I would like to hear 
that whole scope of artistic work from. So thank you to all of you who recommended this, to all of you who upvoted it as well. Please continue to make comments recommending what songs you would like to hear in the comments of this YouTube video in particular. That's where we look for your suggestions the most and that's where we track them. So definitely write your comments down there and let me know what you would like to hear next on the channel. You can also find me here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time for live premieres. We have a fun chat room. It's really fun to talk with everybody there. So come and get to know us all better. And you can also find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.